white vans are the cheapest there are. If you do get, if you buy a van and it has a color, black, blue, yellow, whatever, it costs an extra couple thousand dollars. So a lot of people tend to get the white one because they're just inexpensive. Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today I am here with Jared Tachi, who is a stealth van dweller. Uh, and you've stealthed a lot uh, through Southern California, mm -hmm. which is one of the toughest places around, really. So we're going to help you understand, if you have to live in a city, how to do it. How to be stealth, how to avoid the knock on the door, what to do if there is a knock on the door, and all the details from a real expert. So, Jared, before you, we do anything else, uh, you re record your life yeah, in your van on YouTube, mm -hmm. and tell us your YouTube Name. Uh, my, it's just my name actually. It's Jared Tachi. So it's J A R R O D T O C C I. Or you can even look up my, the van is called Ghost. So you can look up that as well. And that'll be, should be there, hopefully. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> has it gone away since then? No, it hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, and your website is, the YouTube is a lot about camping in town in your life. Uh, yeah, it is about, um, how how to live the stealth lifestyle i guess you could say um i do a couple different all different types of vlogs uh when it comes to uh how-to videos or stealth videos whatever it may be okay good so this is good information you don't have to rely just on this one video uh you can uh go to his channel and learn all about it in detail tell us a little bit of your background where are you stealth camp parking at in in socal and all the all of the ins and outs uh, well, I background, I'm originally from Boston, Massachusetts, or right outside the city, the suburbs. I've been in the van for about two years now, and I've been uh, mostly around the greater Los Angeles area. Um, for the first eight months of me living in the van was mostly Hollywood, um, which was interesting in itself. And so, uh, why are you living in your van in <laughs> in Los Angeles and Hollywood? Uh, so, I... I I have a degree in architectural engineering, uh, which is why I built the van, but I've been pursuing stand-up comedy for quite some time now, and I knew having this kind of lifestyle was uh, money-saving, so I wanted to downsize into a van, and uh, also it was great for stand-up comedy to be on the road. So it lets you pursue your dreams uh, when they're not really paying a whole lot of money yet. Absolutely, and it's honestly, since I've been doing it, it's 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 freed my mind up it's freed up just like me as a person it's really opened up so many doors for me it, it's been probably the most gratifying thing i've ever done in my life which is weird <laughs> which is very weird but true yeah, i hear that all true. the time it is and it's the best times of their life are living in the van and you know it's weird this is kind of off the stealth topic but i've been an asthmatic my entire life i've carried an inhaler with me my entire life and about a year ago, I stopped carrying my inhaler. Wow. I have no idea if that's because of the van life or because I've been getting older. I don't really care, but I contributed towards being in van life and de-stressing myself. Stress probably is the big thing. Mm -hmm. yep. Which is weird because I'm parking cities, which is, people would think it's stressful. Yeah. And it's not. It's not. Okay, no. well that's good. That's that's what we want to learn is yeah. how to make life a less stressful. And there are a lot of folks here who still have to work. I mean, you're a young guy. You're, you have to work. I do. And so jobs are in cities, and, and in your case, uh, comedy clubs are in cities. Comedy and clubs. And that's where you are. Any side jobs I find. I, uh, for the first year, year and a half, I actually worked in the hospitality industry, uh, valeting, uh, or just you know random odd and end jobs that I have to be at work. So you still have to be there. Um, they did take advantage that I lived in a van, though. They so, did? Oh, yeah, because I park on their lot. So they'd be like, oh, you're never going to be late. So. <laughs> That's a sweet deal there. <laughs> it and was. In, and in Hollywood, especially, the valeting must be just universal job. You can get easy. It is pretty easy. It is. So there's a lot of people out there who want to be in cities and for whatever reason yep. work and and, and uh, live in the cities. So, uh, and you've kind of mastered it. After two years, you're pretty comfortable. How many times have you got a knock on the door? Uh, the, the infamous door knock. Yes. Uh, zero. That's impressive in Zero Los Angeles, time. Yeah. San Diego. Yep. Those places are famous for door knocks. They are, and I've heard that. And I knock on wood, haven't received one, and my plan is not to get any. Well, that kind of raised the question. I remember my first night in a van in the city, there were noises all the time, and mm -hmm. it was really unnerving. Mm -hmm. Did you find that? Now, because before I lived in the van, I also lived in the heart of Hollywood. So I was used to the outside noises. I used to sleep with my window open. 
Uh, so living in the city, that kind of ambient noise, you're kind of used to. So I was used to that noise. Uh, I actually had trouble sleeping last night because I'm in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, no, it's so <laughs> it's so quiet. I'm like waking up every few minutes expecting to hear noise, and I don't. Right. I hear some people argue that there really is no such thing as stealth. You're just kidding yourself. You're not doing yourself any favors. It's just luck, or they just. Do you think there's any such thing as stealth? Do you have your own control over your own destiny there? Uh, you know, I do, and I or I think I do. Um, I'll just give you an example. Um, for eight months of my first van lifing, when I first got into van life, for the first eight months, I parked in front of a police station. That's pretty bold. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I parked in front of a police station and I was among other RV dwellers and van lifers. They were hassled constantly and I was never hassled. The cops never bothered me. Uh, the cops never, you know, did anything to me. Just, they left me alone. And I made it, it was, I never exited out of the, the side door. I always exited out of the front doors to make it look like I was getting out of a vehicle. Um, so I do believe there is stealth aspects to it. You just have to do it right. And what kind of a van are you in? I'm in a high top Ram Promaster. It's a 2017. So the fact that you're in a pretty expensive vehicle mm -hmm. probably made it a little easier for you. Uh, yeah, I would think so, uh, and I have no windows on the sides right. either, which is helpful, but I also know that you can be stealth with windows. Um, having a more expensive vehicle, is it also uh, catching to the person that may want to rob you? So you, right. may, you may be stealth to um, you know, law enforcement, but are you stealth to the, the, the people that want to rob from you? Uh, right. And that's, that's a kind of a trick, because if you have, I, I have fake signage on my van, well, when do. I park in sign, when I park in, that's a that's a tip. Uh, if you if I have fake signage and I have different types of signs, I have dog grooming signs, I have plumbing signs, or I have uh, you know uh, chemical signs, which is a good one because no one's going to break into a chemical truck. So if you have something that is going to, if you have a uh, you know JT's computers, you know people are going to break into that because you might have a bunch of computers inside. So you kind of want to make sure that you don't look expensive on the outside. Right. That's yeah. a good tip right there, yes. Yeah. So you have a cargo van, yeah. no windows on the outside. Some people say that that gives the creepy van <laughs> vibe that, you know, you're going to jump out and grab a kid and pull him in. Yeah. Versus passenger van, which some people think is more stealth because of it. Yeah. So, but you didn't think that because you bought a cargo van. I did. Uh, and this goes back to the windows. I didn't put a free candy sign on. <laughs> That's another tip, folks. No free candy signs. No, no free candy. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't think it's a creepy thing, but like, I think it's more creepy if you can see inside of a van while somebody's doing things inside of their van. Like, if you have windows on all the sides, and as you know, uh, you turn the lights on the inside and it's dark on the outside, you can see clear as day inside of any vehicle. Uh, unless you have curtains. Now, I didn't want to put any windows on that side so you can't see inside my van no matter what. I do have windows on the back, by, by, my back doors, mm -hmm. but I have two sets of curtains. So there's no light penetrating. And I would even argue that a van with windows, passenger van, that's all covered over is more suspicious, more notable and memorable yeah. than just another cargo van. Right, and exactly. You, you, you want to be a chameleon when it comes down to it. You right. want to blend in with your surroundings. So whatever, you know, if you have a if you have an RV, just make sure you blend in with the rest of your surroundings around you. If you have a van like mine, like a high top, uh, one of the reasons I did get this van was because I knew I was going to be in Hollywood a lot. If you go around Hollywood, there's a ton of movie trucks that have the same exact van that I do. Right. Um, you know, even now you see FedEx using these trucks. Mm -hmm. So they're out there and you just kind of have to design it correctly. You know, it's now, my van's one of the top sellers for, uh, you know, in America. Yes. Because- You see them everywhere. You see them everywhere. We're at the RTR in 2019 and man, they're- They're everywhere. Pro Masters are everywhere. Yeah, because they're inexpensive. Uh, they're very easy to build in. Now, a lot of people argue that uh, the reason there isn't really any stealth is because you're not fooling the cops. I mean, the cops are, they're no dummies. Those, right. you know, they know what's going on. Uh -huh. So are you trying to fool the cops or? I actually, no, I'm not trying to fool the cops because I don't think even in uh, Los Angeles, I don't think it's actually illegal to live in your vehicle. Oh, really? You know, what's funny is that my van w was up for sale and I actually had a cop contact me 
uh, I'm not going to say where, but he contacted me. He wanted to purchase my van so he could live in it. Right. And I won't tell you what police station, but there was a police station of a of an officer living in his van. He parked it on the lot, so that is legal, very legal, because he parked it in the police parking lot. I was more on the street. But I'm not trying to fool the cops. If you are respectful towards law enforcement, they're going to be respectful right back. You know, if they do knock on your door or if uh, if a if a uh, security guard knocks on your door, they're just gonna ask you to move. They're not gonna pull you out of your van and search it. They're not gonna do any of that. They don't care. They just wanna make sure that you're not doing anything illegal inside the van. They wanna make sure you're, you're not, you know, selling drugs or even having children in there. It's just, just respect them. That's all that I can say about that is, we're not, we're not fooling anybody. No, but, right, you know, I think that's important. It is, yeah. it is. I can, I can picture, I can, I can pick out anybody living in their vehicle. If I drive down the street, I can say living, living. No, that's an actual van. Living, living. Like it's easy. Right. Kind of, we're trying to fool the public yep. so that they don't call and complain. I call it the civilian, right? Right. Like just a public, just the everyday person walking by. Right. I want them to walk past my van and them not to think twice that somebody's living inside of that. Right. A lot of us uh, live in cities for a while and travel, and it sounds like you did too. You were L.A., San Francisco, San Diego. Yep. So is there a difference between traveling on the road in stealth and living in a city stealth? Yes. Um, by the way, Google is your best friend. You know, if you can literally look up anything on Google, and every city is different, even in Los Angeles. Beverly Hills parking restrictions are different than Hollywood parking restrictions. Uh, Santa Monica is different than Beverly Hills and Hollywood. It depends on height and length sometimes too. Make sure you read the signage correctly. Uh, a little trick about reading signs is you read from the top down in signs because sometimes you'll go to a street and there'll be like 30 signs on different parking restrictions. If you start at the top and it says no parking during this time to this time, that's the one to take precedent over the other two below it. So that's really important if you're inside of cities to do to read the signs and also look up uh, actual parking restrictions. If you have commercial plates, you can't park in certain residential areas. I know that my van is over seven feet high and it's over I think 18 feet long. That's a restriction in a certain part of Hollywood, believe it or not. So you have to keep that all in mind. Street cleaning is another huge sign that you have to keep an eye on. But when you travel, what I like to do is park actually in I'll look up like Holiday Inn Expresses, Comfort Inns, uh, different type of I wouldn't say big resorts but nice four-star three-star hotels that are on the road which you see everywhere Best Westerns when you pull into those that are on the road whether it's on any freeway or right off the freeway you pull into them you'll see seven work trucks and because I look like a work truck I'll pull up right next to them and I'll, I'll pass out and I'll, I'll sleep for the night and then you get up and you go about your day so, just don't go inside and use a complimentary breakfast. Yeah, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Do you have any uh, just general tips and tricks uh, that you can give to folks to help them to do this better? Uh, designing your van, um, you want to make sure that your your solar doesn't look like solar. So I have per I personally have uh, flat panels that are flexible. But if you want to have actual panels, make it look like a like a like a rack that will hold a ladder. Uh, I actually had a friend that did that and he actually put a ladder on the roof mm -hmm. to make it look like a ladder rack and he had solar panels up there as well very easy simple to do and there it is if you do have windows i would say do a fake signage with uh dog grooming or pet grooming because if you ever see a pet grooming truck they all have windows on the side so you can get away with having uh being stealth with windows on there so you like uh you like some camouflage the signs any other camouflage that you use <laughs> yeah, uh, if if you went to go look at my my van right now, I actually have a hard hat <laughs> on the dashboard. I have a fake clipboard with scribbles on it, and I have a, a worker's vest uh, that you can you can buy any of this stuff anywhere, Target, Walmart, doesn't matter. And I put that on my front seat. I got the thing on the dashboard. And a, and a fake clipboard. It works perfect. You really are a work truck. You can fit yep. in almost anywhere. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, what about residences then? Because in a work in a residence, you might be a little off. Do you do you camp in residences? I have and I do. Uh, you got to be very careful right. when it comes to residentials uh, areas. Um, you, uh, I don't personally like to park right directly in front of somebody's house. No. Um, I will find a side street. Um, you know how 
how blocks are sectioned off, you know, your your front door will be facing a street, you turn the corner and there's usually a block that's empty. If you can find a spot there, I would re recommend doing something like that. And I wouldn't spend more than, you know, a, a night there. Uh, I would really just post up to sleep there because if you're there for days on end, somebody's going to call the police and say there's yes. a specific is a suspicious vehicle right there that you need to go and check and that's when you get your door knock right. so really in the end you got to use your common sense when it comes to it's this. all common sense yeah for people watching who are just starting out mm. do you have a, a examples of locations you recommend if you whatever city you may be in um you know the good areas and you know the bad areas uh so obviously stay away from the bad ones and I wouldn't go to the super, like, for, I'll give an example is Los Angeles. I wouldn't go to Skid Row, which is in downtown Los Angeles, it's, that's, uh, that can get a little hairy sometimes, but I also wouldn't park in the middle of Beverly Hills. You can also go right outside the city limits, which would be the suburban area, right where the houses are starting to become homey, I guess. Uh, just look up restrictions again on Google certain cities won't allow you to park in the street for certain cities so just be cautious of that okay and what about uh, apartment complexes do you ever go camp around them yeah i mean in hollywood that's all there is is apartment complexes so yeah i would park right in front of those like they don't you know the only thing that kind of stinks is the people on the second floor can see my solar panels mm. so i try not to stay too too long in front of those certain apartment complexes because if they see the solar panels then we go back to uh the common folk know that somebody's living in that van because they can see the panels right and uh on the kind of the opposite end of the spectrum how about the industrial areas with the light warehouses and and things like that um you Your know it really looks like it fits there it does it, it, right and uh, there are parts of downtown la that i fit in like it, like I, I could stay there for months on end. You're right on that, yeah, my, your van can fit right in there. Again, you know the good parts of the industrial area, you know the bad parts of the industrial area when it comes to your own city that you may be in, so. Right, some will attract uh, the homeless and, uh, and other RVers, and some won't. Yep, I woke up with a homeless guy sleeping under my van one day. Really? Yeah, in, in Hollywood. Okay, and we haven't mentioned uh, big box stores, uh, Walmart, Ooh. Home Depot. Do you yeah. do those things? I actually do not park in parking lots. Yeah. Walmart. I don't. I don't like to. I just, you can. Uh, when, I drive, when I travel, I like to go to like those, uh, the three-star hotels or motels. I don't like going into a Home Depot. It's just, I, I feel like I'm sticking out. You see a van in a Home Depot, a Walmart, or wherever, they're they're sleeping in there. What they're you living. think? Yeah, they're just just says. I will say that I do like uh, twenty four hour grocery stores. Yes, that's yeah. that's a really good one. Yeah, I have done a couple twenty four hour fitnesses because I'm a yes. member there. Right. So I'll sometimes will go into the club, and I will kindly ask the front desk person, the overnight front desk person, hey, I'm in my van out here. Is it okay if I if I sleep here for the night? And ninety nine times out of a hundred, they say I want to see your van. Uh, out of respect yeah because they just want to see it they want to check it out right. so yeah that 90 times out of 100 they're, they're good to go we should tell folks if you're living in the city where are you going to the bathroom where are you going to take a shower that joining a gym is really the obvious solution it is i i, I built a bathroom in mine i have a right. shower in mine <laughs> but yes uh going to the gym planet fitness 24-hour fitness anything any gym is really 24 hours yeah 100 percent well, Jared, thank you so much. No, thank you for having me. For sharing your knowledge. I mean, a lot of people being forced into it, this is gonna really help them. Thank I hope you. so, and by all means, I'm, I'm open to anybody that needs, has more questions or whatever, just let me know. Uh, Tell us your uh, channel again. You can find me on YouTube, um, Jared Tocci, J-A-R-R-O-D-T-O-C-C-I, or look up Ghost. Ghost Van uh, is also a way to find me. Um, my website will be launched any day now. It's jaratacha.com. So please, I'm, I'm, anybody can shoot me an email, shoot me a message. That's very good, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, and where can we so you go and see you uh, doing your comedy? I'll be hitting the road and, and uh, starting Ghost Comedy Tour, which a ghost comedy tour. I haven't even announced yet, so there oh. it is. <laughs> oh, keep your eye out for it, folks. <laughs> Thank you. So there you have it, folks. I know you've gotten some really good information out of this. If you did, uh, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later.